Um, I've got people who have been um, working on using the Inspired Children program. It's a program that's just 15 minutes a day. Oh, well, two times a week, once a week or twice a week. 15 minute blocks of doing these life skills. And I had one of the most well, I've, I've had so many beautiful emails from parents. One that really touched me deeply recently was there's a little section there about how to teach children about valuing money, that it doesn't come out of a cash teller, that they actually have to earn it and they can save it and they can save budget for something and work towards rather than just assuming that it's going to come from you. So there was a little 15 minute activity that um, was about budgeting and how you could, thinking about ideas of what they could do to earn a bit of money and how they could save and what they wanted. Well, one of the mothers wrote to me and she said, um, my daughter lost my charm bracelet. And she came up to me and she said, Mummy, I just want you to know that I will replace it because you've taught me how to budget. <laughs> and I'm going to budget and I'm going to save and I'm going to replace it for you. And I could hear the tears in the mother's letter. And it meant so much to her that this child had learned about budgeting and then had taken the responsibility to say, I've lost something, I'm going to replace it, I'm going to fix it. And another example was um, there's the 15 minute sock drawer clean up. So you tip the sock drawer out, you pair them all up, you get them all sorted so that children are taking responsibility for their own environment, their socks, their undies and whatever, you can do it in 15 minutes. And they were running late for school and, and her daughter was head was in the in the fridge and she said, for goodness sake, what are you doing? She said, well the fridge is very messy and I'm taking 15 minutes to clean it up. <laughs> so these are the sorts of testimonials that you can see that children translate it so quickly. They don't take very long to translate it in their lives if you can just spend little 15 minutes at a time. So how can you do it? How can you do it in your home? One of the things that surprises people when I talk at you know, parenting events is the very first thing I say is take care of yourself. That is my first advice to you. A lot of people have parent guilt, you know, I've got to you know, sacrifice my own life so that I can look after my child or my partner or whatever it is, my job, my everything else. And so self comes last, do you agree? That's the normal norm. Well I tell you now, you are not supporting your child if you do that. The word selfish as far as I'm concerned, needs to go in the rubbish. So selfish in the rubbish, okay? That's where you need to put it. I've adopted a new word and it's called self-full. And what that means is that if I'm full as a parent, if I feel physically capable, if I feel mentally clear, if I feel spiritually um, enhanced, if I feel whole and full, I can be so full for everybody around me, especially my child. And I role model that I'm important. Would you want your child to make the sacrifices of themselves you do? And I'll bet everyone goes, no, no way, absolutely not. No, no, no. I want them to make, you know, look after themselves. Well, it's, that's your role model. If you give that role model, that's what your child will do. What you do is much more important than what you say, as you will already know from your child's mim mimicking your behaviour. So number one, become self-full. Take time out to relax and your child will see that. And if they ask you what you're doing, tell them to come and relax with you. If you're taking time to eat your dinner, then say to them, my nutrition's important just like yours is. Eat your dinner. If you're taking time out to just go away and be by yourself, explain to your child, I love you dearly but I love me dearly too and I need some time out. So number one, be self-full and forget this whole selfish rubbish kind of thing. The next thing is, isn't it fabulous that children start at zero and finish at around 18 or 20? I know they go on and they'll need your help forever, but let's just say that kind of parenting phase. How many degrees do you reckon you could do in 18 years? A lot, yes? So let's stop thinking about parenting as like overwhelming and overbearing when we've got 18 years to learn about every single stage of development. So if your child is four, start reading about four-year-olds. If your child is 17, start reading about 17-year-olds. If your child has a specific problem, then fo focus on that. So the lovely thing about parenting is that it's protracted. So you get to learn a lot. The way I do it is I always have one or two books on the go on my night stand and 
My husband can attest to this. I usually have the torch on and I'm reading a couple of chapters every night when I get into bed. And then what I've learned, I can implement in my family, with my family, with my son at that time. So I'm reading a book called Dr. Seligman's Flourish. I highly recommend it. I've got it as one of the references. Not an easy read. I'm not suggesting it's easy, but it is an awesome book. Um, so many great ideas in it. It is one of the references. His um, Optimistic Child is another example. So all you have to do is just do a few pages every night. And then when you run out of those books, get on the internet, go, go around and try and find yourself a new area. So it's this kind of protracted. The most important thing about being a lifelong learner I've found is that I am learning at exactly the same time as my child is. All of these skills I'm giving him, I'm actually giving myself. It's such a beautiful partnership. And so lifelong learning would be what I recommend for parents. Introduce life skills in everyday activities. We are not explicit enough. We expect kids to know stuff that is in our head but not in theirs. So for example, when you're serving up a dinner, generally you've put a lot of thought into it. You've tried to put some proteins, some carbohydrates, some you know, vegetables, some good fats, maybe some salads. You've put a lot of thought into what you're going to put together you know, when you were shopping. But do we tell that to our child or do we just put a meal in front of them and say it's good for you? Eat it. Now, my son gets to hear all sorts of information about nutrition as we're cooking. He's usually in there hacking away at vegetables while I'm, you know, cooking the meal. And we talk about proteins. We talk about what they do. We talk about uh, what's important for bones and for growing. He, you know, he reminds me in the morning, he said, Mummy, you didn't give me my zinc for my immune system or my calcium for my bones today. So... Like I said, he's less than five, but if it's in there. It's absolutely in there. I think we underestimate it. So be so explicit with everything you're doing. When you say brush your teeth, explain that you only get one set. You've got to keep those for life, unless, of course, they've got milk teeth, which is when you, you they get a second set. But, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, be explicit. Why? Talk about gingivitis. Talk about, you know, bad breath. Talk about all the stuff that goes with it so that they can get that skill. When you're washing them in the bath, start talking about health, body cleanliness. Give them a thing and say, okay, now you do your arms. Now you do your ears. So it's about being very explicit. And little things like sometimes I come home from work in a bad mood. I've had a really bad day. And when Cameron says, are you all right, mummy? I don't go, yes, honey, I'm all right. When he can see steam coming out of my ears that I'm the wrong colour and everything else. I go, no, sweetie, I'm not all right. Mummy needs some time out. So I usually go off and you'll, you'll hear the little, the little lamb. He'll come and he'll go... Are you all right now, mummy? And just that in that moment will make me all right. But I'm honest with him. I'm really honest. Um, the last fourth one is be okay about making mistakes. I love this thing I invented. I wish I could say I invented it in a, in a beautiful moment. I didn't invent it in a beautiful moment. I invented it in a terrible moment. Let me tell you about it. I'm in another room. Cameron's in the kitchen. I hear this big smash. And I walk in. And there's yogurt all over the floor, all over the, the, the um, everything in the fridge and all over him. And he's standing there in shock because this whole thing is just smashed on the floor. In now, of course, I didn't go, oh, that's okay. Don't worry. I'll clean that all up. That wasn't my reaction. I wish I could tell you it was. I'm not a Zen mummy at all times. So I went in my nicest, you know, nice angry mummy voice. Sweetie, next time you want something from the back of the fridge, can you just ask Mummy to get it for you? Right? So he went, oh, please, Mummy. You know, I walked away because it was awful Mummy face, awful Mummy voice. I can tell you, it was, there was not a nice, even though there was a face going, next time, you want it? And as I'm cleaning this all up, my heart sank and I thought, what have I just done? I have so disempowered him. Next time you want something, ask me. Is that about independence? Is that about teaching my child a life skill? And I went, that's it. From now on, there's two things going to happen. I'm going to always focus on what is the life skill that is missing, not what's happened, but what life skill is missing. Why, why has this happened? Because he doesn't have the life skill. He didn't get that if you stick your hand at the back of the fridge and pull it forward, everything in the front comes with it. Okay, he didn't get that bit yet. And so I called him in and I said, came in really tentatively and I said, sweetie, mummy wants to have a second chance. I want to do that again. Mummy didn't handle that very well. I want a second chance. Mummy made a mistake. And he went, 
okay, wait, really, Chris? Okay. So I said, we're going to practice now. Let's, let's put something in front, let's put something in the back. And he had his little hand in there. I said, see now, pull it forward. Now can you see it's coming out? So what you need to do is you need to pull it apart. And then we need to keep going. And he went, oh, okay. I said, so next time, you need to pull that apart. You need to pull that there. I said, let's practice one more time. So I went, no, oh, okay. So you know, da, 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 da. And I said, is everything okay? He went, yeah, thanks, mummy. Bye. And went off. So I now have the philosophy that you can have two turns at it any time. If you do it wrong the first time, just do it better the second time. It models two things. Number one, that you're human. It means you can do it better without any shame. And number three, it helps them know they're allowed to make mistakes and do it again. It's okay to do that again. And last but not least, before I give you um, a few minutes to ask questions, Enjoy, 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 enjoy. Take the time to enjoy. And doing these 15 minute lifestyle activities, you have to be there. You can't do them on the fly. You can't be cooking and talking about life skills. Be there for 15 minutes. Because a lot of people say, my child, you know, the childhood went by and I don't know where it went and, you know, they're teenagers and they're leaving home. I don't know where it went. Well, I do because I know that I spend at least 15 minutes of very clear activity with my son. I'm there with him at least 15 minutes a day where it's only him. There's nothing more important than him. No phone, no nothing. I at least know that. So I can say that. It's not flying past. I know all these you know, experiences. I know all these moments. They're there. I've been there. 